Well, in this video, we are learning about recursion, a very powerful yet difficult concept. So my intention is that by the end of the video, you at least feel comfortable thinking in a recursive way. We are learning my building, so let's create a function that displays all different combinations of n numbers by ascending order. Okay, we know the problem. Let's write the um, abstraction. We know that n must be an any number. Let's use two to fit this example. And we have to print all the two digits combinations. So for example, 0, 1, 0, 2, wow, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, that. But there is a constraint. These combinations must be unique. So for example, 10 is not valid. 20 is not valid because 10 is 0, 1, 20 is 0, 2. This forces us to think in a non-numeric way. I think the best idea is to use an array for combinations. And let me explain you why. Okay, so if we add the combinations, we, we can control them. There is a very clear logic here, and it's that next number is always bigger than the previous number. So what we are doing is in the array, we are adding the previous or, or first, first, and then we add next, where we know that next is the same as first. Or previous will be a better definition. I'm going to use previous better plus one. And we know that we only need two combinations deep. This means that, oh, one, three, when the index or depth is the same as n, we don't append anything else to the array and we print the combination. In this case, zero, one, okay? Could be zero, two, zero, three, anything else. So what are the four variables we need? n, the starting value of first or initial or whatever, the depth, an array and an array where we can save everything. So let's start start writing the code. Bin main.c in the void uh, in n is two in depth zero. Uh, we need the array of characters. It's going to have the value of n and uh, the first character the start the starting point. Okay. Now we need to write the previous logic of how to append to the array and how to write. So we have this function, print combinations, in then depth, char array, char start. Okay. We are going to make this function recursive. This means it has to call itself. Print combination and depth or start. Okay. Anyone can see that this is a problem. It, this is an infinite loop. So we have to add a breaking point. The breaking point is the point or the, the situation where the function knows that it has to stop. Please don't continue doing anything else. Uh, let's go to the example. We know that depth has to be the same as n. This is a breaking point. We don't need to add anything else to the array. So our logic of function, it's going to be adding elements to the array and the breaking point is top this and, and print it. So if that n, we should return. Oh, but how do we reach this point? Because now we are calling the function always with the same value with depth is zero. Okay, but let's update the value of depth after each call. So here, if we call the function here, okay, print combination, okay. When we call the function here, the value of depth is zero. Next time we call it, it's one. Next time we call it, it's two. Two is the same as two. We can stop and return. So now let's add elements to the array. What we know, we have to add for each starting value. So uh, it's digit, same as start. In this case, it's zero, but it can be anything. Digit start, digit is less or same as nine. We have to be inclusive. Let's add i. Uh, sorry, I know, digit. Uh, digit. Okay, so we move this here and uh, array. Depth, remember, depth is the index in our array is the same as digit. But now there is a problem. We are increasing in the first loop digit, but what happens when depth is one? When depth is one, digit is going to be the same as depth zero. And we said that next is always previous plus one. So we have to replace start with digit. Oh mama, what I did, sorry. We have to replace start with digit plus one. Digit is previous and plus one is next. Okay, now we are building. Now we already built the array. But how do we print the numbers? But you see, we know that depth 
when depth is the same as n, we are not adding anything else to the array because we never entered this logic. So we just have to print. So for each element in the array, we have to print it here. I'm using write, I want to maintain this low level so that it's clear, uh, more clear for anyone watching the video what's happening. Control. And after printing the array, we print uh, line break. And this is the whole logic of the problem. Oh, very easy. Let's understand what's happening with the recursion. First of all, let me let me try the code. I'm not sure if it's working. Uh, I have this build script, so let's run it. And it's working perfectly. It's working perfectly. If we replace n with three, it's also working. Okay, this is the good reference. Seven, eight, uh, eight, nine. Well. How is that this is working? Let's go to the tricky part. I'm going to try to draw what's uh, happening under the hood, but oh my God, it's going to be hard. You have to think in a way where n is the number of or functions that are gonna be accumulated in the stack. What do I mean with this? I'm going to use colors. So we have to first call the function, but okay. Uh, I'm going to use function instead of PC of print combinations. I have this function where n is always two. Depth is zero. Uh, let, let me explain it easier. We call the function. In this iteration of the function, depth is the same as zero. Zero and start is the same as zero. So for e zero, i less or same as nine plus plus what's happening? Whoa, what's happening in this call? Uh, we said that array zero, the zero because of the depth is the same as zero because it's i, okay, in this case. And then I'm going to use a different color. We call the function, the function where the values are two. Now depth, it's, uh, I have depth, yeah, second value, yes. Depth is going to be um, one, depth plus one, the mm, mm, array is the same and start it's i plus. So create a different stack. Now depth is one, start is one. And we have to call the function the same way. For i is one, but is the le um, lesser or same as nine plus plus. And now what we are doing is calling to the ri one, Okay, because the depth is one, is same as one, because the start or index in this case is one. And then we call the function again. The function where the values are two, depth plus one, or a e plus one. What's happening here? Now depth, you see we are going through levels. The, com the, the, um, the program, the computer is still just appending to the array, but now we are going to print the content. So depth is the same as two, and the start is as two, but we are ignoring the start. Why? Because as you can see here, we are not appending, we are not following any loops. We are going directly to the printing section. So what we are doing, the array, it's zero and one. The array has the content, zero and one. And we are just printing it, just print it. We are not doing anything else. Now we have to go back one level. This is a for loop. So this is the first iteration. And now we have another iteration, a1, oh, let me use different colors, no, it, uh, yeah, why not, array1 is 2, why, because we are increasing i here, and now we call again the function, 2, depth plus 1, ra, e plus 1, but we don't care about this i, so we come here directly, and depth is 2, so we are not entering any loop. R A, we have the contents of array. Remember this previous zero? It's a still zero because we, we, we are doing this loop. We are the, doing this loop, we are not going back. So it's zero and two, okay? We continue doing this logic from I to N nine times, okay? We already did nine iterations here. Now we can, the loop ended, we can go back to the previous loop. What do we do? Easy peasy are a zero because we are not increasing in this loop the value of depth is the same as one because here we are increasing the value of i that we call the function two depth plus one array oh, i plus 
one. You know what's happening? We jump here and we initiate a different and completely new for loop. For i is the same as here. One plus one is two. It's smaller or the same as nine plus plus i. And we start again and again and again the previous logic. Array one is two. We call the function two depth plus one plus one array i plus one. This means that from here we jump to the point where the array now is one and two. And we start again with the previous logic. So, it's so crazy <laughs> having nested loops while recursion, but hopefully this helps you understanding what's happening in the computer in a low level. This is a backtracing. Uh, this is very useful logic for, for example, binary trees. Uh, it's not related to this topic, but let me draw what I mean with binary trees. Okay, these are nodes with some values. Okay, and uh, we always know that the values to the left are smaller and the values to the right are bigger. So if we want to print an orderer and, uh, and uh, sorry, an ordered tree, what we are doing is recursion. We call the function to go to the left, go always to the left. Okay, we get this number. Now we go back. Are there values in the left of this one? Yes. Can I go to the right? No. So let's continue. Go back. Okay. Are there values on the left of this one? No more. Are values on the right? Yes. So go to the right and then go to the left. Then go back. Are values at the uh, under this at the left already matched? So we go to the right. So what we are doing is uh, follow this logic and we always print the smaller. So we print this one. We print this one. We print this one. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not showing the screen. We print this one. Uh, we print this one. Then we print this one. Then this one. Then we go con completely to the left. This one. This one. Then we go completely to the left. This one. To the right because... Um, no, sorry. To the left. Okay, this is a uh, very useful implementation for recursion. So hopefully you feel more comfortable understanding this logic. If you have any questions, let me know. And enjoy the coding.